Rub up your engines! Today I'm going to show you how to keep one of the most expensive parts of your car from breaking, how to tell if it's starting to break down, and what to do if it is. If you haven't guessed, I'm talking about your automatic transmission. Now these days, 95% of Americans drive automatic transmissions, so it's a big thing. They cost a fortune to fix when they break down, and there's simple things you can do to ensure that yours doesn't break down so you won't end up getting the warning signs that I'm going to show later that your transmission is indeed starting to break down. Now this 07 Toyota Matrix which is basically a Toyota Corolla in disguise is the best design of all time because it has a dipstick for your automatic transmission so you can check the fluid level. All you have to do to check the level is drive it around maybe 10 minutes. Park on a level surface with the engine running, you wipe the dipstick off, you stick it back in and pull it out. And you want it to be on the full line. Now I was lazy, I didn't warm it up, so this is the hot line here and this is the cold line that's on the cold line. I wipe it off so you can read it, you can see. The cold line starts there and the hot line ends up here. Now why are there different readings cold and hot? Because as it gets hot the fluid expands. Now this particular transmission holds like 6.9 quarts of fluid. As it heats up it expands so the level goes up and down and it's best to check it hot on the hot level. You can check it cold but it's more accurate to check it hot. Now as fluid gets old it gets dirty it can destroy things. I love these old cars because it's got a drain bolt on the bottom, it's got a dipstick to measure it, and where the dipstick goes in you can add new fluid. Modern cars, they're evil swines. They got rid of the dipstick and it's just so they can rip you off when they service it and it kind of makes for planned obsolescence. Now some companies like BMW even took the oil dipsticks off of their engine which is even dumber. They have a little warning light of course it can break. You can't check the level of the dipstick. You can't see how dirty it is right? But then again those are yuppie mobiles and they assume they're going to buy a new car every five or six years and they don't care. But most people want their transmissions to last longer than five or six years and their engines. And since most modern automatic transmissions do not have dipsticks, you can't really check it yourself. There is an insane procedure for emptying and filling it out. Now with the sealed transmission with no dipstick, I have videos showing you how you can drain out a certain amount of fluid, then pump the same amount back in, which anyone can do. But let's say you have a leak in the system. <laughs> then it's another story. Here's what it takes to do it correctly and you might think it's insane but this is how stupid cars have come. This is for a Toyota, late model Toyota and I quote, it's my all data system. To measure the transmission fluid without expensive scan tools, short pins 4 and 13 on the OBD port under the dash. Turn the vehicle on, this will put it in diagnostic mode with a higher than normal idle and lots of scary lights flashing on the dashboard. Shift the transmission into S, go from 1st to 6th back to park, then put it back into D and oscillate between N and D for 6 seconds, then go back to P. This will put it in fluid temperature detection mode. When the P and D lights are both lit green, the fluid is at the optimal temperature for checking its level. And that's not the end of it. You can also use Toyota's TechStream software paired with an MVCI cable to determine ATF fluid temperature. Step 7, open the overflow belt. Then you open the overflow bolt. With the engine running, open the 5 millimeter hex. Excess fluid will drain. Once it drains to a trickle, tighten it up and double check it. Then check for leaks when you're done. Now, why did they do this? Just so they could rip people off, right? The problem is, if you are losing fluid in your system, the system runs low. The fluid both shifts it and lubricates the inside. If you drive a transmission that's low on fluid, it will slowly but surely destroy itself. If you drain what's in there and then pump that same amount after you measure back in and you have a leak in the transmission, you have no idea if the transmission's full and it probably won't be because it has lost some fluid and you have no idea how much fluid it lost because the evil swines didn't put a dipstick. One with a dipstick, very easy. Check it every once in a while. If it leaks a little, just keep adding it. You can't do that with these stupid dipstick the systems. You're either going to pay a dealer or a mechanic like me with a very fancy scan tool to fix the leak, then go through all those procedures using our computer to make sure it's completely full of fluid. Because if you don't have enough fluid, it'll burn itself out. And if you have too much fluid, it'll blow the seals out. And you say, well, they're just seals. Well, the main seal on the transmission blows. You have to disconnect the transmission from the engine to replace that seal. So you don't want too much fluid either. It's a good idea every once in a while you get an older car, jack the car up in the air, under and look at your transmission. And it's easy to tell. Here's the engine. That's the engine drain plug. Here's the transmission. Here's the transmission drain plug. Okay. Notice how the transmission in this car 
is bone dry. There's no oil leaking, right? No, as I said, on this car, it wouldn't be that big deal if it had a little leak because you got a dipstick, so you could check it and add it. But if you don't have a dipstick, you're screwed. If it's wet there, you're leaking fluid. You want to fix that problem as soon as possible because, as I said, if you don't fix it, you lose fluid. The fluid both drives the transmission and lubricates it. So, if you're driving it low on fluid, it's going to burn itself out eventually. And then by the time the transmission starts acting up and shifting weird, often it has done irreparable damage to the inside of the transmission, and you're going to have to get a rebuild or another transmission. This is why you really need dipsticks on automatic transmissions. But then again, like I say, the evil swine who build them all have taken them all away. They love it if your transmission breaks after it's out of warranty. You'll spend a fortune with them to fix it, or you'll buy another car. Total planned obsolescence and any BS they give you is just that. Follow the like I said, if you don't have a dipstick, you jack it up, it's totally dry there, you can do as I show in my videos. You can drain out fluid, measure how much it is, pump that back in, and you know it's full because you put in the same that you took out. Since it's dry, you know it's not leaking, but if it's leaking, believe you me, you better pay a guy like me with a fancy machine to do it right because I've had people have crappy mechanics work on their car. Nine months later, their transmissions destroyed themselves because the idiots didn't put enough fluid back in because they didn't know how to operate the equipment they had. Sad but true, if all those cars had a dipstick, anybody can do it. So you want to prevent any damage in the first place by checking for leaks, fixing them before they do damage because it's insidious. It takes months or years to destroy them. Leaks here, leaks there. You get half a quart down, a quart low. Hey, you realize another thing. You change the fluid in this old one. It takes about three quarts when you change it, right? But the system's like 6.9 quarts. A lot of it stays in the torque converter, stays in different parts. You're only changing less than half. And in some cars, it's only a quarter. So it behooves you to change it frequently. I change mine like every 40,000 miles because it's a Toyota. But if I had a Nissan, I'd probably change it every 30,000 miles. Now, let's say you do have a leak and you find out you're going to have to take the transmission out to replace the leak, well, you might want to try this stuff. It's called LubeGuard Seal Fix. Now, in the past, I talked about AT205 Reseal, right? does the same thing. I think it's the same stuff. It smells the same. What it does is it rejuvenates rubber seals. Most transmissions have rubber main seals, and the side shafts for the axles are also rubber seals. This can rejuvenate them. Now, if the seal's totally ripped and torn, no, it's not going to fix anything. And this is something you must understand if you're going to try something like this. In order to save money, some American manufacturers are using Teflon oil seals. And they found out they're absolute garbage. They leak. And of course, the reason they're using Teflon seals is because they're cheaper to make. They don't have to make an oil seal that has a spring holding it in. It's just coated with Teflon. Of course, the usual American crap with Teflon, it wears off and then leaks. But if you do have Teflon seals, do a little research if you got an American car. Do not use anything like this because it will eat up the Teflon seals. It's good for rubber, which is great. It's a better design anyways. But if you have Teflon seals, do not use this. Do not use AT205 Reseal. It will eat up the Teflon seals. This is only good for rubber seals. So if you go under your car and you see oil is leaking from the side seal here where the drive shaft goes to the transmission. It can fix that leak. If you find the transmission fluid is leaking here between the engine and the transmission, it could fix that seal on a Toyota. If you see it leaking around the gasket, no, you got to replace the gasket. It doesn't work on gaskets. It only works on rubber seals that have springs holding them in place. Now, let's say your transmission starts acting up, shifting funky, but the fluid's okay. Before you spend a fortune, somebody telling you, you need a new transmission, we have to overhaul it. There's a lot of crooks out there. Find a guy like me. There's a nice scan tool like this Autel. You can diagnose and test things. Unfortunately, there's a lot of crooks out there these days. They're going to try to sell you a transmission job and overhaul. It can be as simple as you have bad shift solenoid. Electronic solenoids help shift the gears. They don't shift right. Sometimes it's that. And rather than some guy saying, oh, I'm going to sell you a transmission. Oh, we got to rebuild. It's going to be $2,500. Get a guy like me to hook one of these machines up. 2007 with the 1ZZFE engine. And it'll do a whole fault scan of all the different systems. And... We mechanics can look at the live data, transmission data, lockup solenoid, and we can do special tests such as checking the lockup solenoid, line pressure solenoids, gives you all the stuff 
You can do bi-directional testing. Everything that has to do with the transmission. Turn them on. You can turn them off. You can see. Is the solenoid working? You can send it information. The computer will tell you. Is it operating? Is it not operating? All cars these days have electronically controlled transmission. Even this old 2007 Matrix. Just realize it's totally insane what these modern scan tools can do. Particular one is an amazing system. Granted, your best bet is to buy a quality transmission with a history of long life and very little maintenance like this Toyota Matrix that's basically a Toyota Corolla. Now a lot of times it doesn't matter what you do if you bought the wrong car. Let's say you bought a Nissan Rogue with a CVT transmission. Horrible transmissions. You could change the fluid every 10,000 miles. You're still probably going to have problems as it ages because they're crappy transmissions. Especially their CVT transmissions. And if you remember how I said when you change the fluid you change anywhere from less than half to one quarter the amount of fluid that's actually in the transmission and inside the torque converter. So when you do change fluid, use the original equipment fluid. You do not want to mix fluids. I know there's a million guys out there with very expensive transmission flushing machines and they're just itching to get their hands on your money. We're going to flush your transmission out. My advice, don't. Unless you got a clunker that will barely move under its own power and it's the last ditch to make the thing work, do not flush your automatic transmission. Change it. If it's got a filter you can access, replace the filter too. Put the same exact fluid back in and then drive it away. Don't flush it. Flushing can create all kinds of problems. I've seen so many people have their cars flushed. They bring it to me and say, Scotty, the guy sold me a transmission flush. Now it doesn't shift right. And I say, oh man, well it's too late now. He flushed it out and something's wrong with it. And the old fluid was old and had more friction. He put new fluid in and it's slipperier. I don't flush transmissions unless you got a junker and it barely goes what the heck it's worth a try i mean you're probably gonna have to rebuild it anyways and maybe you'll get a few more months or a year out of the thing but on a good running car don't ever pay somebody to flush it you're just flirting with disaster so now you know a little bit more about automatic transmissions so you don't get ripped off so yours will last as long as it possibly can because they're very expensive pieces of equipment to fix maintain them and buy the right one like this Toyota. You never know. I mean, truthfully, I'll tell you the truth. I've had customers with these things, Corollas, Matrixes, that never changed the fluid. They had 300,000 miles and they were still running fine, right? But don't tempt fate. You know, change it every once in a while. I change mine every 40, 50,000 miles. And as I said, if you have a leak, you see it dripping, fix it right away. Especially if you do not have a dipstick. Now, if you have a dipstick, who cares? So it's leaking a little. You check the dipstick every once in a while, add some as it leaks out, voila. But if you don't have a dipstick you won't know how much to add and the procedures to adding it correctly when you're low on fluid you can't just drain it out and pour the same amount back in that you took out because it's leaked some out and it won't have the right amount in the first place. To the people that design these cars that don't have dipsticks on them they're just ripping everybody off. Preventive maintenance is the big deal with automatic transmissions. You see it's leaking fix it sooner than later because if you wait later and it runs for months or years low on fluid it will have destroyed the inside and cost you a fortune. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.